the Prylorian ships ripped through the darkness of space like a swarm of locusts, weapons thirsty for puny human blood. Korvac sneered at the primitive metal hulks hanging uselessly in the void ahead. Soon, Earth would be his slave planet. It was 2257. A century had passed since Earth built its first warp drives and stumbled into a galaxy ruled by predators. The Prylorians viewed humans as cattle, expendable pests to be crushed under a reptilian boot. Robert Reyes stood ramrod straight on the bridge of the UES Valiant, a heavy cruiser tasked with patrolling the fringes of the Sol system. At 35, the human naval officer had seen his share of battles against pirates and raiders, but this was different. An entire Prylorian battle fleet was bearing down on humanity's homeworld, hell-bent on conquest and subjugation. The survival of the entire human race hinged on the actions Reyes and his crew took in the next few minutes. Success meant freedom, failure meant chains. As the enemy warships grew larger on the viewscreen, Reyes narrowed his eyes. The Prylorians thought Earth's fleet was a joke, a collection of rickety antiques. They had no idea what humans were truly capable of, or the nasty surprise Earth had in store for them. Reyes smiled grimly as his finger hovered over the weapons control. It was time to show these scaly bastards what primitive really meant. Korvac's eyes widened as he watched the battle unfold on the viewscreen. The human ships moved with a speed and agility that defied belief, easily evading the Prylorian weapons fire. Their own energy beams sliced through Prylorian shields like they were made of paper, causing explosions to blossom across the hulls of his warships. Impossible, Korvac hissed, his scaly fists clenching. How can their primitive technology be so advanced? On the bridge of the Valiant, Reyes coordinated his fleet's movements with calm precision. Alpha Wing, execute feint maneuver Delta V. Beta Wing, target the enemy's flanks with torpedo spread Gamma II. The human ships darted and weaved, their movements perfectly synchronized. Prolorian vessels erupted into flames as human weapons found their marks. Korvac slammed his fist on the console. All ships concentrate fire on the human flagship. I want that ship destroyed. A barrage of Prylorian energy beams converged on the Valiant, but the ship's advanced shields absorbed the impacts without buckling. The Valiant's point defense lasers swiveled and fired, intercepting incoming missiles with unerring accuracy. Reyes smiled as he watched the Prylorian assault fail. Their weapons can't touch us. Continue the attack. The Valiant's main cannon glowed with power, before unleashing a devastating beam that speared straight through a Prylorian battleship, causing it to explode in a blinding flash. As the battle raged on, it became increasingly clear that the Prylorians were outmatched. Their ships were being torn apart by human weapons, while their own attacks proved ineffective against human defenses. A transmission from Earth's High Command appeared on the Valiant's viewscreen. Captain Reyes, reinforcements are en route, the ships you're fighting alongside are just the tip of the spear. We've been hiding our true strength from the galaxy, but now it's time to show the Prylorians what humanity is really capable of. Reyes nodded, his eyes gleaming with determination. Understood, Command, we'll hold the line until the cavalry arrives. On the Prylorian flagship, Korvac's eyes widened in shock, as sensor reading showed a massive fleet of human warships dropping out of FTL on the edge of the battlefield. These ships were even larger and more heavily armed than the ones he was currently facing. Realizing that defeat was imminent, Korvac made a desperate gamble. All ships, charge the human lines. We'll take as many of them with us as we can. The remnants of the Prelorian fleet surged forward, weapons blazing in a final defiant assault. But the human ships stood their ground, their shields absorbing the onslaught as their own weapons continued to pick off Prelorian vessels one by one. As the Prylorian ships charged forward in a last desperate attack, the fabric of space itself seemed to tear open. A massive wormhole, its edges crackling with energy, yawned wide near the battle site. Korvac's eyes widened as he saw what emerged from its swirling depths. A fleet of gargantuan human warships, dwarfing both the Prylorian vessels and the human ships already engaged in battle, surged forth from the anomaly.
These behemoths were unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen, their hulls gleaming with advanced alloys and bristling with weapons that made the Valiant's armaments look like toys. Sir, we're being hailed by the lead ship of the new fleet, the comms officer reported, his voice trembling with awe. They identify themselves as the UES Prometheus, flagship of Earth's Titan fleet. Reyes felt a surge of pride and relief as he watched the titanic human vessels wade into the fray, their weapons already spitting death at the Prylorian ships. He had heard whispers of the Titan fleet, but never dreamed he would see it in action. On the bridge of the Prometheus, Admiral Marcus Graves stood tall, his grizzled features set in a mask of determination. He had waited decades for this moment to reveal the true might of humanity to the galaxy. All ships, engage the enemy, Graves commanded, his voice booming across the fleet's comms. Show them what happens when they dare threaten Earth. The Titan fleet tore into the Prylorians like wolves among sheep. Streams of searing energy and volleys of antimatter missiles ripped through the enemy ships, shredding their hulls and sending them spinning away in flames. The Prylorian weapons, so devastating against the Valiant and her escorts, splashed harmlessly against the Titan fleet's advanced shields. Korvac watched in horror as his fleet was systematically dismantled by the human reinforcements. His grand plans for conquest lay in ruins, shattered by a foe he had so badly underestimated. Helmsman, get us out of here, Korvac barked, desperation creeping into his voice. We must retreat and regroup. But before the Prylorian flagship could flee, a targeted electromagnetic pulse from the Prometheus washed over the vessel, shorting out its systems and leaving it dead in space. Admiral Graves, the enemy flagship is disabled, Reyes reported over the comms, a grin spreading across his face. I suggest we send over a boarding party to capture their commander. Agreed, Captain Reyes, Graves replied, his voice filled with grim satisfaction. Let's end this. As human boarding craft, filled with power-armored marines wielding advanced weapons, streaked towards the crippled Prylorian flagship, Korvac rallied his bridge crew for a final stand. The boarding action was short but brutal, the human marines cutting through the Prylorian defenses like a plasma torch through paper. Reyes led the charge, his armor's augmented strength and speed making him an unstoppable force. On the bridge, Korvac and his guards put up a fierce resistance, but they were no match for the human boarders. Reyes crashed through the bridge doors, his armor shrugging off the guards' weapons fire and engaged Korvac in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The two leaders clashed in a whirlwind of blows, Korvac's reptilian strength pitted against Reyes's power-augmented armor, but in the end, there could be only one victor. Reyes smashed his armored fist into Korvac's jaw, sending the Prylorian commander crashing to the deck unconscious. Admiral Graves, this is Reyes, the human captain reported, standing over Korvac's prone form. The Prylorian commander is in custody. I think it's time we had a little chat with our friend here about unconditional surrender. As the human fleet secured the battlefield and began mopping up the remaining Prylorian forces, it was clear that a new era had dawned for the galaxy. Earth, once dismissed as a primitive backwater, had just announced its arrival as a major power in the most dramatic fashion possible. The Prylorians, and indeed the entire galactic community, would never underestimate humanity again. The battle was over, but the work had just begun. As the Prylorian ships drifted through space, their hulls shattered and their crews in disarray, Admiral Graves turned to Robert Reyes. Captain, we need to get those survivors off those ships. They may have been our enemies, but we're not going to let them die out here. Reyes nodded. Aye, sir. I'll coordinate with the Titan fleet to launch rescue shuttles. We'll bring them aboard our ships, provide medical care for the wounded, and ensure they're treated with respect. The Admiral clasped Reyes on the shoulder. You're a good man, Robert. This is how we show the galaxy what humanity stands for. As the rescue operation swung into action, news of the battle spread like wildfire across the galaxy. The Galactic News Network broadcast the story on every inhabited world, 
and the images of the mighty Titan fleet decimating the Prylorians sent shockwaves through the alien races. On the planet Zephyria, Ambassador Trellis of the Zephyrian Confederation watched the broadcast with a mix of awe and trepidation. He turned to his aide, his brow furrowed. Get me a line to Earth immediately. We need to establish formal diplomatic relations with the humans. A race with that kind of power could be a valuable ally or a formidable enemy. Similar scenes played out across the galaxy as the alien races scrambled to reassess their views on humanity. Some, like the Zephyrians, sought to forge alliances, while others, like the ruthless Kragan Empire, began to plot and scheme, seeing Earth as a threat to their own ambitions. Back on Earth, Robert Reyes found himself hailed as a hero. In a ceremony attended by Earth's leaders and broadcast across the planet, Admiral Graves pinned a medal on Reyes's chest and announced his promotion to captain. Robert Reyes, for your bravery, skill and leadership in the face of overwhelming odds, I hereby promote you to the rank of captain and place you in command of the UES Dauntless, our newest and most advanced deep space exploration vessel. As the crowd cheered, Reyes felt a sense of pride and purpose well up inside him. He knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter for humanity, one in which they would take their rightful place among the stars. In the days that followed, Admiral Graves worked tirelessly with Earth's political leaders to chart a course for the future. They established a new department, the Earth Galactic Affairs Council, tasked with managing humanity's relationships with alien races and representing Earth's interests on the galactic stage. Meanwhile, in a secure holding facility on Earth, Korvac sat in his cell, his mind reeling from the events of the past few days. He had expected the humans to be ruthless, to torture him for information and make him pay for his actions. Instead, they had treated him with a level of compassion and respect that he had never experienced before. As he interacted with his human captors, Korvac began to see them in a new light. He saw their ingenuity, their determination, and their unwavering commitment to their ideals. Slowly but surely, his perceptions began to shift. One day when a human intelligence officer came to question him, Korvac surprised both of them by offering to cooperate. He shared information about the Prylorian Empire's military capabilities, their political structure, and their plans for galactic domination. He also warned of other threats, races that the humans had not yet encountered, but who posed a danger to Earth's interests. As Earth's influence continued to grow, and its technology advanced at a breathtaking pace, Captain Robert Reyes and the crew of the Dauntless prepared for their first mission. They would be venturing into uncharted space, seeking out new allies and potential threats, and blazing a trail for humanity's future. Standing on the bridge of his new ship, Reyes looked out at the stars and felt a sense of destiny calling to him. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew that humanity would face them head-on, united and stronger than ever before. The Dauntless glided through the inky void, its hull illuminated by the distant stars. Captain Robert Reyes stood on the bridge, eyes fixed on the viewscreen. Uncharted space stretched out before them, a vast expanse of unknowns. The crew worked at their stations, monitoring sensors and analysing data. Captain, I'm picking up an unusual energy signature, the science officer said. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Reyes turned, put it on screen. The view screen flickered and an image appeared. A massive structure hung in space, its surface covered in intricate patterns and glowing with an eerie light. What the hell is that? Reyes asked. Unknown, sir, the officer replied, but it's emitting some kind of subspace signal. It's, it's trying to communicate with us. Reyes felt a chill run down his spine. He had a feeling they were about to make first contact with something ancient and powerful. As the Dauntless approached the structure, a hologram shimmered to life on the bridge. It coalesced into the form of a tall, slender being with luminous eyes and skin that seemed to shift and change like liquid metal. "'Greetings, humans,' the being said, its voice resonating through the air. "'We are the progenitors. We have watched your species with great interest.' 
Reyes stepped forward. I'm Captain Robert Reyes of the UES Dauntless. What do you want with us? The progenitor tilted its head. We wish to offer you a gift. Our technology, our knowledge, all of it could be yours. You have shown great potential, and we believe that with our guidance, you could become one of the most powerful races in the galaxy. Reyes frowned. Something about this felt off, and what would you want in return? The progenitor's eyes glinted. Simply that you sever your ties with the galactic community and submit to our guidance. We would become your mentors, your protectors. You would be our loyal servants. Reyes's jaw clenched. I don't think so. We didn't fight our way to the stars just to become someone else's pawns. The progenitor's expression hardened. You would be wise to accept our offer, human. The alternative is far less pleasant. With that, the hologram vanished, leaving a stunned silence in its wake. Reyes turned to his crew. Get me a line to Earth. We need to warn them about this. As the Dauntless sped back towards human space, Reyes couldn't shake the feeling that they had just stumbled into something far bigger than they had ever imagined. Back on Earth, the news of the progenitor's offer sent shockwaves through the government. Emergency meetings were called, and heated debates erupted in the halls of power. Admiral Graves slammed his fist on the table. We can't trust these progenitors. This is a trap, plain and simple. But others were not so sure. Their technology could solve so many of our problems, one politician argued. We'd be fools to turn it down. As the arguments raged on, Reyes dug deeper into the progenitor's history. What he found chilled him to the bone. Every race that had ever accepted the progenitor's gift had ended up as little more than slaves, their cultures erased and their people broken. And then came the final piece of the puzzle. Korvac, the Prylorian commander they had captured, had escaped from his cell. As Reyes reviewed the security footage, he saw Korvac's eyes flash with the same eerie light as the progenitor hologram. Reyes' heart sank. Korvac had been a progenitor agent all along, manipulating them, pushing them towards this moment. In a final, desperate plea, Reyes addressed the Earth Galactic Affairs Council. He laid out the evidence, the truth about the progenitors and their intentions, and in the end, he made his stance clear. We cannot accept this offer, Reyes said, his voice ringing with conviction. To do so would be to lose everything that makes us human, our free will, our right to choose our own path. We must stand together and face whatever challenges lie ahead, but we must do so as free people, not as slaves to some ancient race with their own agenda. In the end, the Council voted to reject the progenitor's offer. There was no going back now. Earth had made an enemy of the most powerful race in the galaxy. As Reyes stood on the bridge of the Dauntless, staring out at the stars, he knew that dark times lay ahead, but he also knew that humanity would face them head-on, united and unbowed. They had come too far to turn back now. The future was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The fight for humanity's freedom and survival had only just begun. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.